for the fourth and last part of our special dedicated to Tim Pope and his relationship with The Cure, the group that he has created videos for over a period, a time span of 10 years. We uh, have this evening the few and the latest videos, but um, we want to first listen to Tim Pope, who has recently uh, been awarded by the British Phonogram Industry the award of Best Video of the Year for his lullaby video, Ours for The Cure. Let's see how he accepted this award. Somebody won an award for, uh, a Brit award for Lullaby. Um, what was your reaction to that? No reaction. I, I don't, it's like, it was, I thought Robert made a really cryptic comment, a comment. He said at the beginning, he said, oh, well, we're not used to getting awards. And the thing is, like, The Cure have been so um, underestimated, certainly in terms of England, maybe not Europe, for years and years and years. So all I could say is I don't think it'll change anyone's life. I mean, it's, it's nice to get something like that, sure, but, um, you know, so what? <laughs> Well, he doesn't seem to be that excited, but uh, Lullaby was one of the most controversial and spectacular videos of this past year. It also was banned because it was frightening, and it does uh, give life to Robert Smith's nightmare in quite an um, emphatic way. It's particular also because Tim Pope usually didn't put so much emphasis on the real uh, meaning of Robert Smith's text, but in this occasion, yes, he did. He almost translated into visual images the exact test that uh, Robert Smith had written, and it's uh, his intro verse lyrics that really give you that uh, feeling of fright, because Robert Smith is quite a particular person. And in this video, he plays a split role of both the victim but also the prosecutor with all the psychological uh, implements that that does give. It is, a, however, a small masterpiece and is worthy of any of uh, the best visions of horror movies. Let's see it. It's the only song on the, out of all the new songs that, that's um, like a narrative sort of song. It's, um, it was supposed to have an atmosphere that was like a mixture of something with This Way Comes and a razor head, somehow combining those two. And it's um, obviously the Spider-Man the, in the song is a, um, a mixture of analogies, I suppose, some very obvious. And the video, we've just done a video for it with um, Tim Pope, and he's made it very obvi obvious. <laughs> no, too obvious. I spent, spent hours trying to disguise the song, you know, and he's not things it all out to the open. Um, it's just to do with like a, a fear. It's like one of the fears I've had ever since like, I've been really young, um, of not being able to go to sleep because I don't think I'll ever wake up again. And it's, it's really just that. You sound as though you've got a strong fear of death. Um, it's not really a fear, it's, it's a, a, a frustration with the inevitability of it. It's the rage. Were you aware that um, it actually got banned on MTV and Tube Channel because it was supposed to be scary? Does that, like, annoy well, the you? The thing is, doesn't, uh, no, um, not really, no, because I think the thing is, a lot of the, all I did was reflect the fellow qualities of the song, and the, a lot of Robert Smith's songs have this sort of child, like, a lot of his, the issues that he deals with, and he deals with this like childlike imagination. So all I did was reflect the qualities within the song. So really, you should ask him that question, not me. I'm really the wrong person to ask. So probably that means that I successfully reflected the qualities within the song. I mean, yeah, when you get lies like, and I feel like I'm being, being eaten by a thousand million shivering furry holes. I mean, I'm not going to feel it in the Sunday school, am I? You have this habit of um, putting him in very unpleasant situations in every video that you do. Yeah. Is he, is he a masochist or are you a sadist? I think probably a bit of each, actually, because, well, it's just part of the bad mouthing thing. He's sort of bad mouthed me for years, so I just have to retaliate. I have to pay him back to make him as uncomfortable as I possibly can. It was great, actually. When we did the lullaby video, he said to me, he said, <laughs> it was really hilarious, because he phoned me up and he said, ha-ha, he said, at last, at last, at last I've won. I've got a video where I won't have to, where I will not be uncomfortable. And then it was great, because when he was laying on the bed, we, to actually put all that spider web over his face, we actually did it with glue. So that's because it was like this candy box machine. It sort of whipped this glue up, and he was laying under layers of glue, so I actually had the last laugh. So it's just this sort of little game that we have, really. It's good, it, does, it does good for the people. I mean, they go off in their bloody limos, don't know they're on flags and all this. It does good to suffer a bit, that's what I say.
now it's on with a love song that resembles quite a bit lullaby and it's filmed in a fake cave where we come across Tal stalactites and stalagmites and um, it uh, gives a feeling of fright once more although it should be a love song and it suggests eventually even a phallic a symbolic interpretation and uh, this clip uh, confirms once again the trend that both um, uh, Tim Pope, but also Robert Smith have to neglect, uh, neglect irony and uh, create anguished, dreamlike situations. 